for analysis there. Now, a patient's HIV has become undetectable following a stem cell transplant in only the second case of its kind. The man, known only as the London patient, was given bone marrow stem cells almost three years ago from a donor with a rare genetic mutation that resists HIV. Well, let's speak now to one of the study's researchers, Dr. Laura McCoy, who's from uh, University College London. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. McCoy, for joining us here on the program. So, in the history of HIV AIDS, we've only ever really known about a case like this once before, the, the Berlin patient. Could this be the second? Yes, in a, in a very short answer to your question. This is the second time where we've seen um, sustained remission from HIV. Obviously, the Berlin patient um, received his transplant quite a lot longer ago, and so there's been more time elapsed that he has remained undetectable. With the London patient, the monitoring is going to continue. Um, but currently all the data available indicates this is sustained remission. Help us understand how this was actually done. Okay, so to preface that, <laughs> my role in the study really has been in analyzing the viruses within this individual before the transplant. Um, but briefly, he was receiving cancer treatment and as part of that, he would, needed to have a transplant to try and um, remove all the cancerous cells and replace them. Um, with cells from a donor. Now this donor happened to lack a particular protein that HIV needs to enter cells called CCR5. And so that means that now this individual, after the transplant, only has white cells which also lack CCR5. So there is no HIV left and no cells left in him in which the HIV can spread. So this actual procedure is incredibly complex, expensive and risky. So is it potentially open to other people with the illness? I think that's a really important point to stress. Um, the treatment that the London patient underwent is something that should only be happening when it is medically required for the cancer treatment. It is a very risky procedure, it's very complicated. Um, so directly this is not something that could be used to treat other individuals with HIV, but hopefully from a, a scientific viewpoint we can study this case in more detail and try and understand mechanisms um, and ways that we could alter the level of this CCR5 protein and potentially help other people. So just to make it clear, it's not actually a, a cure, it's just managing the actual HIV. So the difference between what we're seeing in this individual and current therapy is that he does not need to take medication every day. We cannot detect any HIV within this patient. So that's why we say remission. It's, it's kind of analogous to cancer treatment. You know, you're, you're in remission until the cancer comes back. So in this scenario, currently no HIV can be detected. You only say cure when everything is over. So we keep monitoring and, and hopefully the remission continues. And we've never really seen that, have we? Um, aside from the Berlin, the Berlin patient, patient, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is, I guess, a second key example. Uh, what's interesting about um, you know the HIV virus, since we saw it emerge in the 1980s, 37 million people um, infected, actually there has been a huge amount of research into it, hasn't there? There really has been. I mean, and you can't underestimate the impact that the antiretrovirals that are available to people can have. Because you can live with it. You can live a very, very good life with but these treatments it does require taking medication every single day and you know we'd like to do better dr laura mccoy thank you so much for joining us here on the thank program you.